Tonight, we speak with one of the most outspoken congressmen calling for better gun control, Connecticut's Jim Himes, and he, he's got a lot to say. Then, we dig deeper into the problems with the cashless tolls. Some people, they're getting fined, hundreds, even thousands of dollars, and there's a whole lot of questions about the company running the program. Also, yet another scandal for the NCAA. The biggest teams, the biggest names in college hoops are getting investigated by the FBI, and this could be a game changer. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. Thank you for joining us. I'm Richard French. The gun control debate, it is continuing to dominate the news from coast to coast. And at the CPAC convention, it was topic number one. But it is a one-sided conversation at that gathering of conservatives. President Trump, he spoke to a very friendly and pro-gun crowd this morning. He went on for well over an hour, rambling, many would say, only mentioning strengthening background checks once and that only in passing. The rest of the gun talk was about getting rid of gun-free zones, stopping Democrats from, his words, repealing the Second Amendment. By the way, that's not even feasible or possible. And again, talking about arming teachers, hundreds and thousands of them, with hidden weapons. Here, your Commander-in-Chief. It's concealed. So this crazy man who walked in wouldn't even know who it is that has it. That's good. It's not bad. That's good. And a teacher would have shot the hell out of him before it happened. He also had some very strong words for the school safety officer at Parkland who didn't enter the school as shots were being fired. When it came time to get in there and do something, he didn't have the courage or something happened. He had one guard. He didn't turn out to be too good, I will tell you that. He turned out to be... Okay, we have a moment here in America where there is momentum for some change, some form of tighter gun security, scrutiny, control. Now, we've been at these moments before, especially after Sandy Hook. I don't have to remind you, but as you also know, nothing really happened in that aftermath except on certain state levels. The question is, will we see something happen now? Well, that's one of the things I asked my first guest this evening. Congressman Jim Himes, he is a Democrat from Connecticut. Here's our conversation. You know, Congressman, one of the proposals that's getting the most attention is coming from the president. Yesterday he was talking about 20 to 40 percent. Today, 10 to 20 percent of America's teachers, roughly, oh, three to 600,000 teachers here arming them. You think this is a good idea? No, I think uh, arming teachers is a terrible idea, and it turns out most teachers feel that way as uh, as well. You know, teaching is a is a very very difficult job to begin with, and uh, you know you can only imagine what it would be like to be a teacher where you got to kind of keep up on all of the you know curriculum changes in geography, and then oh by the way you also need to do training and the lethal use of force and firearms. I mean it's just not what we would aspire to in our teacher, uh, you know, for our teachers. But but of course it's you know of course we should be talking about school security, and if the question is should we have armed security guards in school. I think that's a perfectly legitimate question. There are armed security guards in government buildings in lots of places, retail establishments. Um, you know, uh, since Sandy Hook, of course, we've seen dramatic changes in school security. So I think it's a fair topic. But the idea of, um, uh, of arming teachers, I think, is a very bad idea. Five years ago, certainly you don't need reminding what happened at Sandy Hook. Did you believe down deep in that moment uh, as we grieved as a nation and looked at those 20 children, let alone those six teachers, that we would have had real changes to our gun laws. I mean, we obviously didn't see it happen. So why should we believe, even with all the attention and all the passion behind this, that this time will be any different? You know, it's a really good question. Um, I was sure after Sandy Hook five years ago when 20 first and second graders were murdered, I was sure that that would be just so obscenely appalling to the American public that we would see forward progress on gun safety and yes on mental health you know and, and you know it was a similar situation where a disaffected young man with a with a weapon of war uh, with a you know a, a fully semi-automatic uh, weapon of war uh, killed uh, first and second graders interestingly enough that that of course galvanized this area galvanized the country uh, but there wasn't change now we need to see whether the Florida situation the Parkland uh, massacre will bring about change but the activation of teenagers a group of people that we usually think of as distracted in 20 different directions on 20 different things, they have really gotten vocal and really motivated. So I'm, I'm hopeful. I mean, again, I'm not going to celebrate until we actually see some forward motion. But these young teenagers, not just in Florida, but here uh, in Connecticut,
market um, are, are really not taking no for an answer. And speaking of political pressure, Congressman, do you believe, particularly for a Republican facing re-election in the midterms this November, that the unbelievable movement we've seen here, really led by high school kids across this country, is going to make them think twice here um, about opposing some version of gun control, or is the NRA just too powerful to cross? You know, the NRA, the genius of the NRA is not the money they spend, although they do spend a lot of money, and there's a lot of politicians who have taken a lot of money from the NRA. The genius of the NRA is that they have spent years convincing a good chunk of the American public, and in particular the gun-owning American public, which, look, is a responsible, by and large, responsible group of people, that there's really only one answer, which is don't allow for any discussion of any kind of gun safety measure. Uh, their theory is that if you if you give an inch, if you contemplate sort of tightening up the background checks, that, that people will take a mile. And the next thing you know it, nobody has any guns, which is absurd. I mean, we have a Second Amendment in this country that guarantees people's right to bear arms. And the question is simply, what a, what sort of regulations and safety features we should have around that right. So the NRA has, has done a remarkable job um, stopping the discussion. And these kids are going to do one thing. These kids are going to demand that discussion. As we saw, and look, I'll give them credit, as we saw Marco Rubio in a very difficult environment, we are going to have that discussion. And there's no question in my mind that a lot of politicians who might have dismissed people who are uh, aggressively ar are arguing for gun safety aren't going to dismiss those people quite so easily anymore. There does seem to be some bipartisan support for some measures, like raising the age from 18 to 21. We saw that from the Florida governor today, at least on assault weapons, maybe even on all guns. Some level of background check strengthening. I know the devil's in the details. And also getting rid of bump stocks, which seem to be a no-brainer. Do we look at these things as something's better than nothing, or is it limiting in that we're cutting off the chance for needed and more broader action? You know, I think th th this is not a, a problem that's going to get solved next week or next month or even next year. We have a radical rethink to do of the role of guns in our society, the availability of guns in our society. and. We, we can do it. We can do it. We can preserve people's rights to, 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 to own a weapon, um, but say a whole bunch of things. We can say that there will be weapons of war. AR-15 may qualify. Not all semi-automatic rifles necessarily need to be made illegal, but some weapons that you know, have very high rates of fire, 30-round magazines, you know, 30-round magazines, that's not about self-protection, that is not about hunting. Uh, weapons of war should be uh, made illegal uh, for civilian use. Uh, Universal background check, where no matter where you buy a gun, whether it's from your neighbor or online or at a gun show, you get a background check to make sure you're not dangerous. Uh, yes, bump stocks. You know, bump stocks rose to prominence after Las Vegas. You know, I can't imagine any particularly uh, good argument for the existence of gun stocks. You know, there is going to be a package of these things that isn't going to fix the problem 100%, but which is going to save a lot of lives. And that, you know, that over time, as we have these conversations and get small things done, will save a lot of lives. You know, earlier today, Congressman, the president said that Democrats like you want to get rid of the Second Amendment. You've also been accused by some of being a quote-unquote gun grabber. Are you calling for confiscation here? Speak to what you're being accused of. You know, it, this is one of the most frustrating things uh, in politics. I, like so many other uh, uh, elected officials, uh, I respect Second Amendment rights. I enjoy shooting. I've shot probably four or five different kinds of weapons over the course of my life. I enjoy it. Now, it's really important for the other side to lie about people like me, because people like me are regarded by most people, if they're willing to listen, as pretty reasonable, because my position is and always has been. I respect Second Amendment rights. I'd like to see fewer weapons of war in civilian hands. I'd like to see everybody checked out before they exercise their Second Amendment rights. That's pretty reasonable. But it's important to people like President Trump, and more importantly to the NRA, to say there are no reasonable people out there, that everybody wants to take away your Second Amendment rights. There's, if, if there's anybody in that category, I don't know it. But what it is, it's a way of stifling a discussion. It's a way of stopping a reasonable discussion that results in us being a in a more reasonable place. Now, the reason the NRA is where they are is because that reasonable place, there are probably slightly fewer guns sold but there are also fewer Americans dead. And that's why stifling this debate and accusing the other side of acting in bad faith, you know, when you do that, you bear complicity for the blood that is shed in our society every single day. Congressman, thank you 
very much. All right, everybody, when we come back, I'm going to bring Andrew into this conversation. There's been developments not only on Capitol Hill, but also from the president on the subject of guns and where we ought to go next. You won't believe some of the comments we've heard from CPAC also on this subject. And the editorial pages, including the New York Post, even saying arming teachers is frankly nuts. All that and much more straight ahead. Thank you.